What's up everybody? So we've got another high probability setup breakdown on ticker Roku today for $1,335 profit. Um, this is the this is the uh, the profits that I posted. 2793 is my account number. I was trading the weekly options call contract. So I'm showing you this to verify the profits so that you know that um, this is a real trade. This is not a paper trade. Guys, there's a lot of stuff to be said in this video, so please take notes if you have to. Um, this I've previously made a video like this on Ticker Workhorse. Um, it's a high probability setup. I'm literally using the same strategies and methods to identify this play and put it on radar for us and then trade it as I did on Ticker Workhorse. Um, so the idea is the same. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that one and then come back to this one. Um, but you're gonna love the material that I put out in here. So let's go ahead and get into the trade. Um, I'm going to have to back this up to the daily chart time frame to let you go, let you guys know why this was even on radar for us. So last Sunday on Twitter, I posted uh, ticker Roku. So long as this holds the 50 EMA, which is this bottom line right here, this green dotted line. Um, I'm bullish, patiently waiting for the next leg up here. So while it consolidates, keep alerts set over 170 for the pop. Okay, why 170? Because that was the previous level of resistance here on the daily chart. One, two, and then three and four times it's hit that mark, right? And then was consolidating just below that price point. So yesterday when we got the pop move up and over the 170 and the close into all time highs, that then makes this a, um, a high probability setup. So why is an all time high play a high probability setup? You're gonna to wanna to write this down because there is very little to no resistance overhead. Um, what is stopping this from moving all the way up to 200? What price action in the past is stopping this? Nothing, right? So at this point, we can consider every dollar or every half dollar um, mark as a resistance point. Um, for a ticker that is this large in price, um, that's gonna be 195, right? And then up to 200. So you get the idea. We're gonna move into the five minute chart time frame <clears throat> and break this down even further. So I post a watch list every single day for my team. The watch list for today was posted, um, here I'll show you, 6.07 a.m. pre-market, right? And ticker Roku was a long over 190 and a short below 182. So let's go ahead and put a trend line at each of those marks. This is your 182 um, and this is your 190. So we're, let's talk about these, uh, these trigger levels and why they were set there. When ticker Roku broke out yesterday, it did not have any type of pullback until it broke the 182 mark and then started to consolidate. Um, when it pushed up and pulled back again, I mean, this is close enough here to kind of start to validate uh, 182 as a support point. So since it was opening up just below the um, the high, the all-time high here, we wanted to see it hold 182. We wanted to see it hold this because if it failed to hold 182, this is just a straight push up. That means that there is little to no support below this price point. So if 182 failed, this looked good for a short because there's not a bunch of price action here stopping this from continuing to drop. So 182 was our mark for the short trigger based off of this consolidation, this and this dip right here. All right, I'm gonna highlight that here. 190 was our long trigger because that's the high of day. That's at this point, you know, the all time highs. It's not perfect. Uh, 189.79 could have been the long trigger, but let's just round it up. Let's just say 190 um, is a good price point for this to, to, take, to take a trade long over. All right, so we're gonna zoom in even further here and really micro focus on, on this price action and what's going on. Um, at 6.44 a.m., this is how I was able to take an earlier entry to catch this pop. So I teach my team to wait for that first five minute candle to close over the trigger level prior to an entry. But if you're waiting for it to close over the trigger level, you're waiting for this to close at 192 and you're literally watching it run from about 183, almost 182, you know, you're looking at a $10 run right there before you even get into the position. There is no need to wait for this to break over the trigger level when you have it moving from the bottom trigger level. So if it moves from one, from the bottom, from one trigger level to the other, 
that right there in itself is a possible trade. Okay, so we have to adapt as traders. Um, here's the deal, guys. I said uh, 6.44 a.m., all right? Roku was holding the short trigger as a support. Watch this over the 187 mark. So let's talk about that. I'm gonna go into the one minute chart time frame and show you where I alerted this. 6.44 a.m. is going to be right here on this candle. All right, so at this, at this time, here's what we had. We had two things. We had a break of the downward trend line. This is a method that I use to, um, to identify intraday trend changes. So the idea is that you draw a trend line across the tops of candles on a downtrend. And when you get the break over that trend line, you likely have a trend change. Additionally, we had uh, 182 being validated as a support. Um, the third thing I guess you can argue is that at this time, this level right here, 185, was acting as a previous support and resistance. And then look, at 644, what do we do? We break this resistance and then we're back to validating 185 as a support. That is why I put this in chat right here. Now, why do we wait for this to break 187? Because at, 180, at the 187 mark, that is the opening price right here. So it pushed up, started to consolidate, okay? We have to watch multiple time frames. The one minute chart isn't telling us a whole lot based off of this. This almost looks like it could be um, rejecting the 187 mark. And again, if you're waiting for this to break and close over 187, you're missing out on $2 profit right there. So how was I able to enter earlier than 190 and get a better entry? Look at the five minute chart time frame. 187 is right here. The five minute candle, the second that five minute candle closed over the 187 mark, I took the position risking off 186. So I had a tight stop at 186, a $1 stop, and I knew that it, at, at this point it likely had potential to test 190. That was gonna be my price target. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at a $3, a $3 move top side with a $1 stop to the bottom side. That's a three to one ratio. That's great for trading. Okay, that's, that is a perfect, um, perfect place to look at taking an entry. So I'm gonna move back to the one minute chart time frame. Here's your pop move up to uh, 189, 190, um, and, and ultimately pushed up to about 194. Now at this time, the, I did not sell right at 190 because we knew that this was the all-time high. So the fact that it was breaking 190, um, that's what gives you this volume pump, right? And I figured it had more room to run because an all-time high break for a stock, is it's a bullish sign, it's very bullish. You have um, algos that are triggered to buy whenever all-time highs are break, uh, broken. You have traders that are setting alerts at all-time highs because they know that a break of an all-time high is a bullish signal so you have traders piling in to drive this price um, to drive this price up so I did not sell for quite a bit let me get back over into my discord server here um, I did not sell for quite a bit and, and until let's see 706 was when these profits were posted at uh, so 706 I saw this weakness right here it's it makes sense that when a when a previous resistance is broken, especially after a $10 run up to the top side, it makes sense, guys, that the stock is going to pull back and test that old um, resistance as a new support, right? So we wanted to see this break 190, but not continue to just keep going up and up and up parabolic. Um, maybe that's great if you're already in the position, but what you can do if you're missing this entire move is wait for the pullback, guys. There's no need to chase this entry way up here. You're likely going to get a pullback, especially after a $10 run like this. So here's your perfect pullback uh, test of 190 as a support. Um, we're 50 cents off, but right, nothing in trading is ever exact. That's close enough. So um, you have a hammer candle formed at the bottom of a downtrend, right? That's a bullish signal. Enter as close to 190 as possible. Enter as close to that trigger as possible so that you can set your stop loss just below the trigger. So then you have, um, you know, a maybe a dollar below the trigger, give yourself some wiggle room, 189. So then you have a $1 stop with a potential reward. Um, at this point, you know, we're looking at high of day being resistance. So that's a $3.65 reward. So you're, again, looking at um, a, a, a three to one ratio here when it comes to profit and loss. So here's your move up. Um, what I saw was this level 
had previously been treated as a resistance. Um, again, it kind of started to get rejected and treated as a resistance, so I sold here. Um, and that is how I was able to make $1,335 profit on this trade. This was also alerted multiple times in chat after this. That 190 level was scalpable plenty of times. So um, you could have taken an entry here at the next pullback. You could have taken an entry here at this pullback. Another entry here, another entry right here. 190 has been validated as a support multiple times. And this is, I mean, this is pretty volatile. This is like a, you know, we're looking at a four, three, three or four dollar move each time. Plenty enough to take profits on, guys. Um, so that's it. That's all that I have on ticker Roku. Guys, if you don't already, please follow me on Twitter. Um, it's the same handle, Trade Light Gates. I post plays all the time, free plays. Um, it's accessible to anyone. I'm pretty good at this technical analysis stuff. Um, I'm, hope I'm hoping that you guys are taking notes, hoping that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please show me some love. It helps out um, with feedback, you know, whenever I get likes and comments. Um, even if you want to share the video to some friends, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. Get the name out there. Um, let me know in the comment section if you want me to do any type of specific breakdowns. Um, I would be happy to, to, uh, to oblige to that and, and take up your offer. So thanks, guys, and I hope to see you in chat. All right.